The bookshelf quilt you love so much is made of trash, scrap fabric, if you will. I sorted through mine to find some that I like for a pillowcase for my friend. It's my going away gift to her, but you can feel free to sew along if you like. Depending on the size of my scrap, I cut them into strips that are one and a half, two, two and a half, or three inches wide. You want a variety of widths, but not too many, and you want it easily measurable so you can put the background on them. When you've got your strips all cut, you're going to trim them to random lengths. Just make sure they're shorter than the final height of your shelf. If you've got a series, make them all the same length. I wanted my pillowcase roughly 14 by 14, so I drew a square on my tabletop because no one can tell me what to do. After I labeled each book with what title I wanted to give them, I realized that I had too many books and I'd have to make two pillowcases. My measurements weren't exact, but I knew that I would fill up with some blank space. On the bookshelf quilt, I embroidered some of the titles by hand, but that would take longer than the time I had. Luckily, my machine does some letters, and so I went through and added a book title to every single one. All of these are books that my friend loves that we've read together or that we've talked about over the last few years. If you don't have this capability, that's fine. You could draw them on or you could leave them blank. It doesn't matter. The very beauty of this type of quilt is that it's rectangles you never measured and book spines that you invented yourself. If you'd like to and you have the time, you're totally free to embellish the book spines if you'd like. You can add buttons or strips of other colors. I think it adds a ton of pizzazz to your shelf. When I was done clipping all of my threads, I sorted them into piles based upon the widths. In part two, the whole bookshelf will come together with this $3 fabric. 